Okay, in the last lecture, we introduced the uh, wide swing low voltage cast coding uh, current mirrors. And that one is, can be used for only long channel designs, technologies. For example, the one micro meter uh, technology and the C5 technology, which is fine. But however, in when the ch channel lens is getting shorter and shorter, there will be problems uh, because of the the voltages, the gate source voltage for M4 is not large enough. So let's draw the schematic first. Do a really quick review on that. So this is the first current source, PMOS, is performing as a current source to uh, bias this NMOS. Right, this is the first one. And finally, you are trying to do what? You are trying to bias this cascading NMOS, current mirrors, right? So this one is going to bias this guy and uh, operate this NMOS, which is called M4, into the saturation region. This is a task of this NMOS transistor. And the name of this guy is called, is the most that white swing. Okay, and you need another one, another current source, and you want this one to drive or to bias this guy. So you want to do them separately, okay? V bias P, V, D, D, V, D, D. <clears throat> and that's M1, M2, M4, M. 5A and 5B. And we didn't have M M3 right now because we want to keep all, all the names of uh, the corresponding uh, transistors uh, with the same name. Just keep it consistent. We're going to add M3 over here to make it work. So this technology, this structure, works for 1 micro the one U technology in LT spice and also this works for C5 This works for the one micron and also the C5 technology. So they are literally large long channel technologies. But however, it doesn't work for the short channel technologies in our CMOS module, uh, CMOS models, model file. Uh, so that model file has a 1U technology and a 15 nanometer technology. You may never use that before. So now let's take a look. So that's a 1U. The one micron technology for both NMOS and PMOS, right? And after that is a is a fifty nanometer technology. So this is a way shorter. It's like twenty times shorter than the purpose one. So the physics will be totally different. You can see there are many other constraints to define this uh, technology for fabrication for simulation as well. Uh, but actually, this is not being used for fabrication at all. This is just a simulation file. We won't be able to fabricate a 50 nanometer. Probably this doesn't exist at all for uh, in any of the factories. And um, however, what you need to know in the future, if you get a chance to work on some of the uh, smaller technologies, transistor size, you need to know that this structure won't work for the small technologies or short channel design. Won't work. For short channel design. And the reason is if you want to, you have to increase the voltage over here a lot more than it used to be to saturate M4 and to provide a high, uh, to provide a high output resistance. And we can demonstrate this in the simulation pretty soon and uh, uh, you can get concept about what's happening over there so now 
let's open this this one uh, so that's a one swing structure in the one micron technology you can see that we have NMOS, the regular NMOS has a, a width to length ratio which is 10 to 2 which is 5 okay and so this one is 10 to 8 uh, but you can see that the length over here is four times longer than this one which is uh, which matches the calculation from last lecture so we know this is required in order to draw a same current in all these three branches in this uh, in this uh, structure so it's not a short channel design right now but let's take a look because this one we know this one works for the one micron technology okay so the current over here is this and the current over here is this so you are uh, wondering why do we want to do a dc sweep over vo to do the simulation so the reason is it's because there should be a load on the top right but we do not have a load right now if you do not have a load it's hard to simulate uh what the result will be so instead of adding a load uh we are just trying to do a dc sweep at this point and see if the entire output resistance can become uh infinity later on or super large output uh, resistance if we can achieve that and after probe the current over here you can see that it's super flat and stabilized at one current and it's which means it's flat which means the output resistance is high and both of these transistors are in saturation and if you want to demonstrate that it's pretty easy if you double click you can find out it's stabilized at uh, 250 milli ohms uh, millivolts and what about this one so vgs is uh, vgs is one me it's about one zero one point zero eight volts right one point zero eight volts 1.0 a volts minus uh minus the uh threshold voltage which is 0 0.8 a volts is gonna give you so vgs vgs equals to 1.0 a volts right and vth we know that which is 0 0.8 a volts so vds stat equals to 1.0 a volts minus 0 0.8 a volts which is 200 um 80 many volts so that's the ideal dc VDS, vds set so we hope this voltage to be super similar to this that's one one jump right so we can bias our this almost right at this point And we can have a wider swing as a wide swing uh, transistor wide swing design and one jump 280 millivolts another jump i hope the voltage over here uh can be stabilized at some point but since we're sweeping this one so we cannot see that which is fine because you know it's gonna be there at some point uh you you have to look at when it arrives 280 millivolts and then from that point see what's the voltage over here all right let's take a look at the simulation curve pretty soon but now we know that this is vgs which is exactly the one desired vgs which is the low voltage at y, y swing so what about this so this is a v vds set so this point should be vgs plus vds set this is what we hope right so if this is this uh, we know vgs is 1.08 volts and we know this one so this point should be something around 1.36 volts and now let's see if this is true you know 1.4 something volts it's pretty close to 1.36 volts 
So this is being biased properly, and at the same time can give you a, a wide swing. Uh, remember this is 1.0 uh, 1.08 volts, and this is uh, 200, 264 millivolts. And we hope this guy, this guy, um, now let's take a look. I know this is sweeping. This is sweeping. Um, so when this guy arrives, this voltage, you can see that they are pretty close. Right? So which means when you're the first one is being biased, when the first one, the first and most, the first jump is being biased at this point, at this point, actually lower than that, the voltage for VO is 400, uh, is 416 millivolts, right? So 416 millivolts is whatever we are getting, but however, it's probably a little bit more than that because we are trying to, it's being moved a little deeper into the saturation region, not directly over here for the blue curve. But it's, you know, something here. So you can see that actually the second jump. See what we can get over here for the second one. Let's get two cursors, right? So when your blue one, so when the blue one, so that's the black one, that's the blue one, right? So when the blue one is, 260, 260, 240, 260, probably over here, I think. Um, and you are the second voltage is 422. It's not exactly uh, giving this almost transistor exactly at VDSF, but it's pretty close. You can see that uh, this is pretty close to uh, twice uh, as much as this one, right? So which means you can keep these two transistors both being operated at the boundary between the child region and the saturation region to give a wide swing for uh, for the for the BL for the output. Okay, so this is totally doable for this one micron technology. But however, if you're doing a 50 nanometer technology. Now let's go back um, and find out uh, the Y swing technology, but short channel here. So I this is the same schematic, exactly the same schematic, but I changed the uh, all these models to 50, nan 50 nanometer model transistors, and in this short channel design. In this short channel design, we are having uh, 50. So, what are the ratios for the NMOS and PMOS regular, the regular uh, sizes? Let me take a look. You know, you're just using a different scale, right? In the one micron technology, you are using, you use um, um, 10 to 2 for NMOS and uh, 30 to 2 for PMOS, right? But over here, uh, you are doing, let me put a text. Which one is the text? This is text. So for NMOS, the ratio is, if you look at here, so this is 2.5 micron is 50 times 50 nanometer. So it's actually 50 over, so this is 2. And for PMOS, the ratio is, 100 over 2. So that's a regular NMOS and PMOS. Right? Uh, so, you know, depends on the calculation we have for the one micron technology. We need, we need this wide swing transistor to be four times longer. The lens should be four times longer than the regular ones. So it should be 2.5 micron. And 400 nanometers, because it's four times longer than this one. 
And now let's do a simulation and see what's going to happen. Boom. All right. So we are using exactly the same ratio for uh, and calculation for the one micron technology in this 50 nanometer technology schematic. And if we probe this current, you can see that the output resistance is not that high. Okay, why is that? If you still remember the the curve, the curves for all for the most PMOS operation, it is something like this. Okay, so that's VDS, that's IDS. So that's uh, VDS set, and this is saturation. This is child region. And which one has a higher resistance, upper resistance? Of course, this one has a higher resistance. Why is that? Because this is delta I, this is delta V. And you can see that delta V over delta I, which is RO, which is a lot higher than this. Right? So you see that? That's delta V, that's delta I, which is larger, which has a larger resistance? Of course, this one. So the reason you are getting this, you are getting a slope, you're getting a larger slope or a ramp for this saturation region is because it's one of the resistors, one of the transistors over here is not being saturated. So that's a problem, right? So it's not giving you a high output resistance, which will uh, result in a not consistent, uh, not constant uh, current output. So it's not an ideal current source for this output uh, branch, all right? So you have to figure out why. So which one is not in saturation? If we probe this guy, you can see VGS is like 300 something millivolts. Also, okay, keep in mind, when you are using the 50 nanometer technology, VDD is not five volts anymore, it's one volts instead. Don't forget to change this one. So, um, is there another, several other parameter, parameters you need to know for the, for the 50 nanometer technology being operated in, in a wide swing range? So if you have the CMOS book, to the very last page, just being sticked to the cover, okay? You can find out all these parameters. Um, so the VDS set for the 50 nanometer technology is 50 millivolts. That's a standard one uh, being used for wide swing applications. And VGS, the standard one is 350 millivolts. And the VTH is only 280 millivolts. You can do a calculation here. Uh, so which is one, 350 minus 280 millivolts, you are getting a 70, 70 millivolts, 70 millivolts for uh, for for the VDS set. So the VDS set and the V overdrive, so VOVN over here, it's hard to see. Let me move it closer. All right. So VOVN means it's also called, sometimes it's called overdrive voltage, overdrive voltage. So whether it's a small, ch small channel technology, short channel technology, VDS set is not the same as V overdrive voltage. It's a little bit different, right? So keep in mind, you you do need, but you sometimes we just use the same uh, same concept, same name. But actually, it's not. You hope to have your VDS equals to V overdrive voltage, right? So this is uh, 350 millivolts minus 280 millivolts. You're getting 70 millivolts. So that's a standard operation uh, biasing for this 50 nanometer technology, and. If we come back here, and if we look at the simulation, so the VGS is fine, right? So 300, uh, 350 something millivolts. Sounds like it's fine, which is pretty close to the standard biasing voltage. But what about the overdrive voltage? The overdrive voltage is changing over the time. And that voltage is a lot smaller. Remember that we hope it, uh, it it is something around seventy millivolts, right? It's way less. 
which means this guy is not being operated in the saturation region. The same as M4. So if we look at this one, it's hard to tell, but uh, if we plot the, the two voltages at the same time, and you can actually figure out the difference between these two voltages is the VGS, which is, you know, 300 something millivolts. Uh, and what about this? So uh, at this point, when we drive our transistor at the V overdrive voltage, the, uh, no, you want to look at the current probably. Um, you know, this is not because you are sweeping VO, so you cannot actually figure this out. But the thing is, at least your M2 is not is in is not in a um, saturation region. That's 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 the problem, right? So if M2 is not being saturated, you get low output resistance, and overall, you get a non -con constant uh, current output. So the way to do that is. You want to increase what? You want to increase the voltage over here to provide more current flow through the channel to saturate this guy for the short channel design. So the way to do that is you can imagine that. So we have two separate stages to bias these two NMOS transistors separately. So this one is managing this guy, and this one is managing this guy, right? So if you want to lift, if you want to lift the voltage over here, what you want to do? You definitely want to increase or decrease the resistance of this channel, of this transistor. So the answer should be increased. Because you can imagine that this guy, the, the voltage is flowing current into these two um, transistors. If you think about this intuitively, right? If you increase the voltage over here, working like a voltage divider, it's going to lift the voltage at this point. Right? So the way to increase the resistance is to make the ratio smaller. Right? So it's, it's not, right now it's super fat, right? super wide and short. The ratio is pretty high. If you make the ratio close to 1, if you make the ratio close to 1, it's not that fat anymore, and the resistance will be higher. And when the resistance over this one is higher, the voltage at this point will be higher as well. So it can bias this M4 more into the saturation region and provide a higher current to saturate M2. So if we let's close this one, since I have a uh, yeah, no, we're not closing this, we are just trying to change. This, this one and this one to make it to be 10 to 10, right? That's a wide swing, trans wide swing uh, transistor trying to, trying to uh, bias this M4. So in that case, we do simulation again and run the current over here. You can see the performance is getting way better than previously, than before. This still has a problem. Now, let's take a look what's the current it should be in the reference reference part. It's something close to 10 microamps, finally. It's 9.8 microamps. What about the current in this branch? See, M1, the IDM1, has 10 microamps as well, close to 10 microamps. However, what about the current over here? So IDM4, the final output, has the last current output compared to the IRF, which is not really good because you can see that I hope the current over here is copying whatever the current flow into the references, but actually it's not. The reason it's not running the same current as in the output channel is because the voltage here is lower than the voltage here. Let's probe it. So these two guys have a different VDS set, VDS. So this is VDS at the output, and this is VDS for this channel. So if this VDS is higher than this VDS, you know that the current here will be higher than here, right? This is this is the I this is the IB curve for the for the NMOS transistor. This is not flat curve. 
all right they are the same size same dimension same structure and this guy has and they have same vgs the same is they have a different vds so that's why the current here have to be larger than here and that's a problem so it's not perfect okay you can increase you can increase the resistance of this transistor to, to lift the vgs for m4 but however the final current is still less than the rf and the way to solve this problem is to add another device in between so we have another design and now let's take a look at that design to see uh, why that one can improve the performance this one <laughs> so that's still a short channel design right it's one volts for the vdd but however the only difference is i added an extra device in between in the middle and i use the same gate voltage vgs uh, vg to bias this transistor as well as m4 so this one i named it as m3 and uh, a weird thing is i bias this vgs using this one so i'm sourcing a voltage a gate voltage from the drain over here and by adding an extra nodes in between it's going to lower the vds to this point and make this schematic symmetric so these two vds will match each other and give you a same i i o compared to i ref and we'll solve that problem and now let's think about that you know this looks weird why this works you know why you don't directly connect this one to here keep in mind if you directly connect this one to here you are getting into a the old design which is not one swing design which is this one remember that if you do this you have to do this as well which is a problem because remember that you get a pretty large vds set so you are not getting a, a y swing design so we don't we don't we don't like this so now we, instead of connected biasing your vgs over here you bias this over here instead and magically this is a forming a feedback loop as well and why is that you can think about that so this one is a gate drain connected uh, uh, current source as well and this is another current source and if you have one current source another current source they're trying to compete with each other in one channel right so which is a problem originally if you do this this won't be a problem anymore because this is a feedback loop it's going to keep the current flow through this current these two current sources the same you can imagine that for example if this one is trying to draw a lot of a more current if this one is trying to draw more current in the channel to mismatch with this one so the channel will be wider and when the channel is wider it's going to drag this point the voltage at this point lower to the ground and if this voltage is lower the vgs will be lower and the current will be less so it's like a feedback until this current matches this current and it's going to stop and you have a constant current flow through this channel so if we do a simulation i can i'm gonna run the current here and the current here oh no i just you know cancel that one and also current here you can see these two currents here and here exactly matches with each other they are both 10 microamps and at the same time it's having a super high output resistance at the same time so this is the final design we're going to use for our layout chip layout uh, for the for the current source at the bottom of the uh, differential pyre for the for the op amp and uh, even though it's a c5 technology but we just want to keep a good practice this is a good design and i'm gonna we are going to use it for the large channel design as well this is going to work for both okay i hope this makes sense and uh you may have a few homework assignments to practice on this simulation and hope you can understand this well if you cannot for now it's fine uh we are you know we you know how to make it work and we just implement implement this 
we were table AL and if it worked. All right, see you in the next video.